Hello, this is Ralph Plotke, a member of the Board of Trustees of the Hopog Public Library, and I'd like to spend a few minutes with you and talk about the proposed new building at Hidden Pond Park. Our library is relatively new. We opened our doors back in 2000, and we currently rent space in Hopog, and we've been renting since 2002. Since the beginning of the library's conception, the Board has been investigating and looking for a permanent home. And once we had an opportunity to see the cost of property in our town, we reached out to the town of Islip to look for some assistance to find a more affordable opportunity. In 2007, we began to speak to the town, and the town presented a parcel at Hidden Pond Park, and a, and a price was agreed upon. To purchase the parcel, it required not only town resolution, but the state to enact a law to allow us to buy the land. And in 2010, we, we signed a contract and purchased the land from the town. You're looking at a satellite image of the site of Hidden Pond Park. On the lower center of the page is the rinks building where the skating happens. And you see a yellow dashed line in the upper right hand corner, which is the footprint of our lot. In order to embark on a building project, it requires not only coming up with a design but meet, that meets the needs of the community, um, but it requires hiring design professionals. The Board of Trustees took a very different approach than what is normally used for municipal construction. The approach we took was that we held three full-day meetings with the community to identify a purpose, goals, and a conceptual design. And at that point, we handed the, the, the starting um, the starting information to a design team to move forward on the project. We started by defining a purpose and the purpose of the Hopog Public Library's new building was to build Hopog's permanent community library in a safe environment for all in a way that embraces intergenerational collaboration to develop community priorities that uses resources creatively, regenerates ecological health, and celebrates diversity so that the project inspires personal and professional growth and fulfillment, generates continuous community participation, and enhances the quality of life in the park, Hopog, and the world. At the second full day session, we discussed and agreed upon the most important goals that the library should meet. And the 10 most important goals in order of priority were, one, to keep the project within budget, two, to have a strong connection to the outdoors, three, to be functional and flexible, four, to provide the community with a hive of activity, five, to provide indoor environmental air quality, six, to provide copious daylighting, seven, provide a durable, long-lasting building, eight, to be energy efficient, nine, to be a cultural and arts center for the community, and 10, to be easily accessed and inviting. The third full day session that we held with the community was a conceptual design session, whereby the community was presented with the physical space needs of each and every function that the library provides. We broke into groups and we talked about layout, formatting, the site, and agreed on two basic designs and with these designs, we handed them over to the design team to start the process of developing drawings and finalizing a budget. While we're on the topic of budgets, uh, the board took a very different approach to calculating a budget for the project. What typically happens for municipal construction is that the architect is given the responsibility of coming up with the design, providing with the community with a budget, and at that point, the community has to either support it or not support it. What we did differently here was once we identified the purpose, the goal, and um, the space layout, we talked to the community and we asked, what increase in taxes would you be willing to pay in order to meet, if we were able to meet these goals? After we met with hundreds of community members, the average increase that the community told us was $145 per year. This allowed the board to translate that $145 increase 
to an uh, to a construction budget and that budget was given to the design team when creating the project another unique approach we took to the project because we were concerned about proper collaboration is that the board and the library management um, spent a great deal of time interviewing and meeting with all design professionals and once the design team was put together then and only then the lead architect was hired to ensure that a spirit of collaboration uh, would be healthy throughout this project what you're looking at now is a site plan for the for the project In the lower right hand corner is where the rinks building is and if you look to the upper left you can see the site plan and there is on the left far left side there's an outdoor area the far right and toward the top of the building there's another outdoor area and the building is in the shape of a sideways two to give you a sense for some of the the, the proposed layout this color-coded schematic shows the different departments that are proposed in the new library the blue area to the left is adult reading and some of the community areas if you look in the upper left hand corner there is a computer lab which is designed to increase the number of computer workstations for the community as well as provide a closed environment should we want to hold computer classes um, in the center of the building on the upper corner is a, com a large community room one of the key objectives that the community wanted us to meet was to provide community space for functions and programs this space can hold up to 120 people and can be broken into as many as five individual spaces the pink shaded area in the middle is a young adult section which we're very excited about currently our current library does not have a de defined area for young adults though uh, allowing us to bridge the gap from children to adults and this is a home this is an area where they can make this their own home to the far right is the children's area which is a large spacious area and the lower right hand corner is a children's programming room specifically designed for their needs the um, the chart you're looking at now is a rent versus bond payment analysis the greenish bars that run level across the page are the bond payments that we would be paying for 20 years the blue bars are the rent payments that we would be paying going forward and you can see that at the end of 20 years the rent goes up each and every year and we would continue to paying rent another important factor to keep in mind is that um, one of the benefits of owning versus renting is that we never find ourselves in a position where the landlord does not renew our lease requiring us to find a new space what is the tax impact on the uh, the average tax holder that's probably a question that's running through your mind in the town of Islip our homes are assessed and they have assessed values between approximately forty thousand and sixty thousand dollars with the average being around fifty thousand dollars if your home is assessed at fifty thousand dollars you have a market value of somewhere around six hundred thousand with the with the um, the bond vote for the new building that would translate to $145 per year tax increase assuming a 4% interest rate on the bond if your assessed value was at $42,000 your increase would be about $121 a year and if your assessed value was at $60,000 your annual increase would be $173 a year over the last several years the library board has been allocating money to a construction fund to deal with the startup cost of construction and over four hundred thousand dollars has been set aside to help pay rent during the beginning of construction so when the point where the the community has not only a bond payment but rent that money has been already set aside timeline for the new building would be we were hoping to have a referendum vote on October 7th of 2014 if successful construction documents will begin immediately with groundbreaking happening in August of 2015 and, and our grand opening in spring of 2017. I thank you for spending the time and, and hearing about the project. And should you have any questions, feel free to contact Matt Bollerman, a library director, and you can reach him at 631-979-1600. Thank you very much.